am the scientific director at Dynamic Earth in Edinburgh, and Dynamic Earth is a science centre. And it's entirely dedicated to engaging people of all backgrounds, all ages, with the story of our planet. I'm still very much of the opinion now, as I was a decade ago, that the evidence for climate change is, is overwhelming. This is an ecological and human crisis that we need to address in our lifetime. But there's some, there has something that has changed significantly, actually, and that's my understanding of the role of the oceans. Um, I'm a terrestrial science, uh, a terrestrial scientist um, by training, and the ocean always felt a little bit separate, um, but that is absolutely not the case. Um, um, the oceans in, in the climate um, system, you know, they have already in, absorbed huge amounts of carbon dioxide over the past few decades. That in some ways has masked the effects of burning um, large quantities of fossil fuels. The future health of the oceans affects all of us. Um, and yet there are millions of lives and millions of livelihoods that depend on a healthy ocean. So this should be one of our priorities. This, these are really significant major issues that we still have absolutely the time and the opportunity to, to get a grip on. Well, my job in science communication is at that interface between the climate scientists and the public. So I'm not a climate scientist. I'm no longer active in environmental research, but I know a lot of people who are. And it's my job to ensure that the work that they are doing is communicated effectively to the public. So uh, my work doesn't relate to the Earth's climate. My, my work really relates to helping people understand the Earth's climate and why we should all be concerned and all very much engaged with this climate crisis. I think people feel a personal responsibility and yet perhaps not, they don't feel equipped with actually the knowledge to know what to do and what makes sense. They're very interested in discussing, you know, should I stop using plastic? Is it about walking to school? You know, there's lots of issues that I think people want to discuss and make sense of. I think in Scotland, we are fortunate in that as a relatively small nation, we are quite close to our politicians and to our government. But I think there is a lot of opportunity in Scotland um, for people to be talking to their politicians and for the politicians to be talking to the scientists. In Scotland, we have very, very strong environmental science um, for a nation of our size. And I think, again, that's where we really benefit as a society. What I hope, of course, is that, that Scotland, with these um, you know, the benefits of having that strong interconnectivity. Uh, hopefully that can be a kind of case study for other countries across the world. Science will always include uncertainty, scrutiny of uncertainty and your data is a way of analysing it. It's a way of understanding where further work is needed. But when you then talk to, in, in a more general layperson's terms, I think, discussion of uncertainties can muddy the waters of what is now overwhelming scientific consensus about the trajectory and the causes and the impacts of the climate crisis. You know, you've got uncertainty in the data, uh, a layperson's understanding of what we mean by uncertainty, um, and then there's just a confusion at, at that interface. It's all about language and how you communicate. Um, so I would say to me, that's where use of the term uncertainty has introduced uncertainty. I hope that everyone will know about COP when it's going on and understand the significance and the importance of it. I hope for people living in Scotland, because COP is on our doorstep, you know, it will mean even more to us living here. The relevance of it will feel so close to home that after it, hopefully, the discussion, the agenda and the pace at which we can address things that we already know about, hopefully the pace at which we can address them and implement change will be accelerated.